All right, guys. Well, here I have a, a 4R100 out of a, a F550. Uh, it's kind of a big truck. The torque converter clutch uh, failed on this uh, unit. We're gonna do a basic teardown and see what else uh, happened to this. It stinks real bad. Uh, you can see in the back of the converter that it was all burned up. The clutch. Uh, it's a little different than a regular uh, 4R100 since this one has a PTO on it. They have a crane uh, with a bucket. You know, uh, they work on signs, so uh, it is pretty heavy. Uh, F550, uh, 7.3 diesel. We're gonna do a teardown right quick. I got my fan on. It's pretty hot over here right now. Uh, I mean, I hope that that, that noise is, doesn't bother you. And I mean, I hope that my voice can be clearly heard on the camera all right well uh first things first uh getting things uh off of the transmission externally we have our uh turbine speed sensor and we have our output speed sensor or input and output speed sensors the bolt didn't want to come out but the good thing is that the extension housing has two bolts here if it was a two-wheel drive you need to take your mount off Otherwise, you're, you're not going to be able to take your extension housing, but on this one being a 4x4, four four, uh, we can take that off. All right, well, it's an 8 millimeter socket to take the input and output speed sensors. Let's go ahead and uh, start working on this thing. I have another teardown video on one of these. Uh, it was a diesel as well. These things they get pretty kind of stuck a little bit the o-ring you get some rust on it as you see there i mean we got some uh rust and it kind of sticks the o-rings a little bit uh let me get a screwdriver here right quick all right so you just want to kind of twist a little bit get underneath the sensor and get it out of that way 13 millimeter let's go ahead and take these off Now on these, I need a uh, little extension uh, to get to them. Kind of like a swivel extension. And it is very tight. You're gonna get a 13 millimeter wrench and a hammer and uh, loosen that up. This one came out fairly easily. That's tight as well. That one came out fairly easily. So whenever uh, one of these uh, bolts don't want to comply like that, get a wrench and uh, you use your hammer and hit it and it will come out. You have a cheap wrench is better. Uh, Snap-on wrenches are a little expensive to be treating them like this, but as long as he does the job, that's what's matters. All right. So we have a speed sensor mounted on the extension housing. And as you can see already that these two sensors are different. One is longer than the other. On, uh, on the smaller trucks, the speed sensors are the same because the reluctor, the reluctor wheel, it's smaller on, on the uh, smaller trucks as well. So this reluctor wheel is, is larger, so it takes a shorter uh, speed sensor. Go ahead and get this thing out of the way. right now we're gonna go to the front it's a fairly large transmission as you can see I mean it barely fits on my bench uh, you can get longer benches I mean they they are available but you've got the regular size so 
whatever works for you. 10 millimeter, we're using a 10 millimeter socket to remove the pump bolts. I guess from where you're at, you can probably see that this transmission has been painted. So yes, it has been worked on before. Uh, has a date of 2012. which is kind of normal life span. We're in 2015 right now on any transmission. I know it's like three, four years only, but it's a work truck. Probably has more miles than your daily driver. You gotta keep in mind as well, the, the weight that this truck has on the rear. So weight has a lot of thing, a lot to do with uh, with the lifespan of a transmission. You can already see all that right there, where the transmission fluid is uh, draining here. Uh, you can see some uh, metal like streaks of metal coming down. Very finely ground metal. This is what a transmission pan looks when you have no more clutch, clutch plate on the torque converter and it's just uh, working metal to metal. No more friction on the, on, the, on the plate and metal to metal. That's what it looks like. All right, get that thing out of the way. Have it on the big, dip it on the big bar salt tank. Okay, so now we got a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to remove uh, these 10 millimeter nuts. That's one, two, three, four, and five. That's five of them. We got five, five nuts. Now we get an eight millimeter socket and we take, we remove all the eights. This front portion of the valve body, uh, this is called the accumulator body. This is called the uh, main valve body right here where it has the valve body, uh, I mean the manual valve on it and it's connected to your linkage. And uh, this is the auxiliary valve body. So we remove all the eight millimeter bolts to remove all these three pieces. All these bolts are the same. The ones I've just removed. There's two bolts here. They are actually shorter than the valve body bolts. They are shorter. So uh, just keep in mind that the two shorter bolts go right here. You might want to keep them separated from the other ones just so you will, will find them quickly. And these bolts are the very long ones. You can't miss this. You can see the size, size of those bolts there. It is very important to use on this particular transmission to use a torque wrench. If you don't use a torque wrench on this transmission, you're gonna create problems. The case is kind of large and the heat will kind of warp it. If you use your impact wrench or you over tighten these bolts, you're gonna you're gonna drag the valves. You're gonna have some sticky valves. Uh, you're gonna create some issues. If it was having all the gears and you were having like converter problem or something like that before, and then after you worked on it, you have some other problems. Well, buddy, you created those problems, so you gotta look for those problems. All right. So uh, here we see two valves, and they don't look. Uh, 
stuck. I don't know what I did to my little screwdriver over here. All right, sometimes you got tools all over the place. You always want to check in with a flathead screwdriver, a uh, little tiny screwdriver, just to uh, have a feel for it. Sometimes uh, a lot of metal like that, you will feel them kind of scratchy. And if you do, uh, clean them up first, and then you got to take your valve out, polish the bore, put the valve back in. All right. Let's take the accumulator body off. Whenever you do a transgo shift kit or any other type of shift kit to correct some uh, drivability issues on these transmissions, most of the parts on um, the shift kit are going to go into this valve body or the accumulator body. You have some different uh, springs that go on the accumulators. You have three accumulators, one right here, one right here, one right here. Then you have uh, three valves and then you have your, uh, your pressure modulator valve in here which this one looks like it's stuck it's supposed to be free floating and I think it already has to shift it but you can I can actually feel this thing uh, dragging when I push the spring up and then I try to uh, push the valve you can see it dragging a little bit let me see if I can get closer here to the camera this valve is open it's open so it was whenever the little valves are open you're gonna have missing gears uh, these two valves look closed and they do return if I flip this over like this you can see the tip of the valve and uh, let me see if I can get this thing closer I know the light is kind of shining a little bit off the, uh, the lens and making it glare but this valve is open and it looks like it already has the transgo shift kit in it transgo shift kits comes with a steel valve for a second gear and uh, you see that these two valves are uh, anodized aluminum. Four one hundreds. You got to pay attention here. Let me get the spacer plate. These can if the check valves are not uh, correct, you're going to actually cause some issues here. Now, normally a uh, four one hundred transmission takes one check ball here and one here, and it doesn't take nothing here, and then two large check balls. Let me turn this over a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. I know you're kind of far. I don't want to zoom the camera in. I mean, look at my hands. But there's a check ball here. There's another one here. And then this one actually has three small check balls. This is where it, where it changes. Uh, 40100 doesn't take 96 and 97 E4ODs take three check balls like this, like you see it here. So rule of thumb on uh, bathtubs like this or elongated ports like this, if it has two holes on the spacer plate, it takes a check ball. If it doesn't have two holes or if it has a square or just one hole, it doesn't take, it does not take a check ball. Let's go, go ahead and compare it. As you can see here, I have two holes here on this check ball uh, bathtub. So this one takes a check ball. Here we have a little slot and we don't have the second hole. So it doesn't take a check ball here. So we're probably going to have some issue uh, in either in the front planet or the forward clutch assembly. So we're going to ha we have actually an extra check ball installed on this transmission. 2012, I mean, it lasted quite a while. It probably has some drivability issues and they just drove it like that. I mean, That's not cool, but anyways, uh, this is our main valve body. Let's go ahead and drain it a little bit. Let's go ahead and check our, check our valves. I know that this transmission fluid is a little bit dark. Now when you, when you over tighten the uh, valve bodies on this, this is the 2-3 upshift valve. And uh, when you over torque this bolt here uh, on the valve body or you over tighten this bolt, it kind of uh, closes uh, the valve bore and the valve gets stuck on the open position. Actually, this is at, at rest. This would be considered open. Uh, when you have it uh, on the control side or, uh, or compressed, it would be like uh, on the exhaust position. But anyways, if you over tighten, you're going you're gonna to drag some valves. Okay, they all seem okay. With all this metal, you don't feel a lot of drag on it. 
what I mean about drag is metal drag. 4100s take a uh, reusable pan gasket. They have torque limiters, uh, so you won't over tighten them. But I see a lot of uh, strip uh, bolts on some units where you use an impact wrench uh, to tighten them up. Impact wrench is a bad idea. All these uh, threads, they look in good shape. We're not gonna worry about that, at least not today. Torx 30 to take our solenoid pack off. All right, let's remove our T30 bolt. As you can see here, this solenoid pack has already been replaced with a color yellow. Normally, uh, you will see them with the uh, orange cover or a clear cover. Uh, that check ball was probably, probably giving them issues and uh, that's probably why they did replace this uh, the solenoid pack here. Let's wait until our uh, compressor shuts off. So Y'all can hear me clearly what I'm about to say right here on the solenoid pack. Let's go ahead and take these three little bolts there to take that plate off. This is very important that it's on there and that, that, that it's tight. If uh, that plate or those three bolts are loose, you're not going to have any reverse. Okay, back to our solenoid pack. This is a pulse width modulated uh, torque converter clutch applied solenoid pack. And the way you identify that, even if it doesn't have a cover like this uh, on the back, because this is removable, you can actually take this cover off. Sometimes you will find them like this. Or you would get the rebuilt ones that you can actually see uh, a circuit board on it, which on this one, it, you can't see it. But some of them, they, you can see the green circuit board, the aftermarket ones. Uh, so the way to identify it is by looking at the torque converter clutch solenoid uh, port. As you can see here, I have three little holes. This is an on-off solenoid. You can see the little ball on there, the little uh, check ball that's seated on the solenoid. Whenever you have debris here, sometimes your solenoid electrically is good. But you, got, you get metal stuck on there that is actually bleeding off. Uh, I mean, that is very common as well uh, to have a solenoid uh, problem when they, whenever they sit like this, you know, the contamination gets uh, stuck on top. Uh, when they're sitting in a different position, I mean, they kind of clean themselves a little bit. But this is a PWM solenoid and uh, on the on-off solenoid packs, you will see another solenoid that looks just like this on this position. Separator plate. We can talk about gaskets, color gaskets, you know, they have an ID line right there. I just want to get this thing closer and see all that metal that's on there. That's a lot of metal. And of course you saw that metal on the pan. This is a little pressure relief valve. Uh, usually there's a check ball that goes on top of this. This is actually a, a Sonics, not a Sonics, but a Transgo item that you put on there, the little poppet looking valve. There's a little thimble screen or a little filter that goes here for a second clutch, for the second clutch valve. Try to prevent this from uh, getting uh, the valve stuck, but with all this metal, it's kind of impossible to keep it from sticking. All right. We have an intermediate band servo here. 4R100s take only ch eight check balls on the case. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We have a bathtub here. Same rule applies. If it has two holes, it takes a ball. If it doesn't have two holes, uh, it don't take nothing. And it looks like there's a line scribed on here. They probably had a check ball on there and then they took it off. Let's go ahead and get this uh, 
goes right here. Let's go ahead and match it to the case. It's right here. It doesn't have a check ball, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And if you see here, we would have seen, let me turn and flip it over. We would have seen the gasket would have an, an oval, like the shape of the bathtub. And you would have two holes. If you have two holes, it takes a check ball. One hole, no check ball. And you can see the scribe here. You know, sometimes people drive X's. This guy just draw, uh, drew some lines on it. Here he drew another line, another line, you know, to kind of mark where the check balls came out. So whoever did this transmission, mark the check balls like however he disassembled it. Probably somebody before him did it and he put the check balls, you know, where they came out. So that's why we have that extra check ball on the auxiliary part or, or the main valve body. Go ahead and drain this thing a little bit. It's still draining. It has a lot of fluid. It takes about 16, 17 quarts of fluid dry after a rebuild. It's a fairly big unit. Mostly all 4R100 four, four takes about 15 and a half to 17 quarts. Depending on the torque converter that's being installed. If it's a gas or diesel. All right, I think that's, that's enough. We should have eight check balls. One, two, three four five six seven eight torlon check balls all right let's get them out of the way we have a overdrive piston housing uh, bolt and we have our center support bolts they are both uh, 13 millimeter go ahead and remove them next These bolts are very, very critical. They actually come with uh, uh, Loctite, blue Loctite already installed on them. These two are the center support bolt. It is very important that you torque this with a torque wrench and do not use an impact wrench. The problem is that when you use an impact wrench, one of these two positions, uh, whenever I take everything out, you're gonna see that the case is free floating on one side and the other one is supported by the center support. The one that's free floating, if you over tighten it, you crack the case around the bolt. And if you crack the case around the bolt on an F550 that is kind of hard to get, you are going to be screwed. You're going to be spending about eight, nine hundred dollars for just the transmission case, but whatever else you need to uh, install in there. Let's go ahead and take our uh, intermediate servo piston this is the factory one that came on this unit but on the older units it take the piston with a regular uh, return spring and a snap ring and a cover and those are not available uh, so you have to up if you see one like that you have to update him with one of these and these are available I mean everywhere and when I mean everywhere, that means uh, transmission parts place. Whenever you're doing a transmission, don't expect to go to AutoZone, O'Reilly's, or any other place like that to uh, get your parts because they're going to look at you like if you're crazy. All right. Now here, I'm going to use... Let's try. I'm going to try and use this. Ugh. I usually take them off with one of these, but the larger one, sometimes I misplace my tools, probably on another bench. Right now I'm using a seal puller, it's an old seal puller, and I'm using two bolts from the extension housing. There's two positions that actually have threads on it, so you can use the slide hammer. I do have a slide, slide hammer, but I don't have the, the size for this pump. So I always use the extension housing bolts. So if you're thinking of buying a slide hammer just to get that thing out, just do what I just did. We're gonna go ahead and uh, remove our uh, 10 millimeter bolts from uh, our pump uh, body to our pump cover.
All right. We got our bolts removed. Let's go ahead and take them off of here. Let's get them out of the way. Now there are differences in the uh, stator support here on this on this area on this side between the 4R100s and the E4OD's. Uh, so pay attention. If this goes bad, if this goes out. If you need to get a replacement uh, pump, just make sure that it's actually the same here. It takes a bearing in here. The ceiling rings. Pay attention to where they're at. Uh, some of the uh, E4ODs, you know, the ceiling rings are moved differently because the uh, overdrive drum changes as well. With all that metal that was shedded from the uh, torque converter, you always want to pay attention uh, to see if you have some pump damage. And we're in luck here that our uh, stator support here or our pump cover is in fairly good shape. I mean, I don't see a scratch on it. Another thing to pay attention to is this hole right here. If you're just going to replace this uh, body and you're going to reuse your stator, just make sure that, because this, this slot right here, the square, is, is going to be either on the body or on the stator. So uh, here we see that it's on the stator, but if you get a body and you're going to put the stator on the body and the body has the uh, slot, that's not going to work. So you got to match your parts. Here we see some metal in here. Big chunks of metal. This came out from uh, the inside of the pump gear. Probably came out of the torque converter. Uh, torque converter has a sprag in it. It looks like one of those little sprag things. Little piece of sheet metal. And I am surprised to see that you do see some scratches, but you cannot feel them. And this this pump is still in good shape. You can see our pump bushing. How scratched this bushing is. The metal got trapped in between the bushing and uh, the torque converter hub. So everything was inside the gear, you know, on the inner gear where this little piece of metal came from. Nothing got in between the gears or in between the pump walls here. As you can see, it looks real nice and shiny. I don't see no scratch marks. It looks in fairly good shape. I'm very surprised to see this. With that amount of metal on it. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause this thing and I'm gonna review whatever I just recorded because I got my fan on and I don't want my audio to be clipping out because uh, then you're not going to be able to hear what I'm saying. Let me go ahead and recheck that and uh, we'll get back in there. Okay, so I turned the fan off. Uh, let's go ahead and continue tearing this thing down. Uh, the radio is a little bit low in the background. Alright, so we have a bearing here. Now this drum right here. You can see that this drum has a uh, gear for our PTO. This is our uh, coast clutch drum or overdrive drum. Uh, the overdrive clutch is uh, spline onto this drum here. Let's go ahead and uh, disassemble this. And we can already see uh, the snap ring is a big snap ring. This snap ring is a transgo snap ring. Let's go ahead and check this clutches. Uh, this particular model takes uh, three frictions. Uh, usually you would see on a regular 4 100 of a 2500 or 3500 uh, or F250, F350 uh, that would have only two clutches. Uh, this being an F550, he has three clutches or three frictions. And of course, the ones with the PTO have this bearing here. Whereas uh, on the other models, they have a bushing instead of a bearing like this. Go ahead and get this thing out of the way. 
All right, so we get our overdrive planetary assembly here out of the transmission. Let's go ahead and uh, take our little uh, bearing and just uh, test it to see if you have, uh, if it feels kind of rough, if it doesn't, uh, the bearing's still, uh, still in good shape. I mean, if you want to uh, open them up, I mean, that's up to you. You can open up the bearings and check them like that. All right, so we have our uh, overdrive planet here. And what we want to check here, this is a steel planet, four pinion planet. What we want to check is uh, our splines. And I know that on these uh, uh, steel uh, planets like this, it's very rare that you would see them stripped from the splines, but you still want to check them out. Uh, it is very normal that you would see, see them uh, stripped. The aluminum ones, you would see normally they will be uh, stripped out and whenever that happens uh, it will not move forward or reverse All right let's get these items out of the way okay so we have our handy dandy here screwdriver with uh, with a tip on it let's go ahead and uh, get that uh, snap ring out out of the way Okay, hold that thought right there. Let me see. Okay, we'll get that later. All right, overdrive frictions. These are overdrive brake frictions, and we check them out, and that one looks in good shape. The middle one kind of looks all right, and we can see a little bit of uh, darkness on there, uh, but it's best to uh, be in an F550 even if they look like that, I mean, they look kind of used already, so might as well uh, put them on new. All right, being a, uh, that he already has his transgo shift kit, this snap ring right here is a spiral snap ring. It should be. Uh, let's look for the opening. Uh, that's right here. Let's go ahead and tap it like this and bring it up. Normally, originally, it just comes with the regular snap ring, but being a uh, Transgo uh, update, that uh, factory snap ring uh, likes to pop out. So this is our spiral snap ring. So whenever you do one of these uh, units, uh, everybody knows that if you don't do nothing to these units, you're gonna have some issues. So Transgo's been out for years, and I've used them for years for many years and they were good. Uh, sometimes like on the older units, the FIODs, you would uh, clean the valve body real good and all the valves will be moving and uh, you will have some issues uh, with it not shifting into fourth gear. I'm talking about the old cable uh, FIOD units, not the electronic ones. And uh, everything looked good but uh, you will have some issues of it not shifting into overdrive. You would install one of those kits and that would take care of the problem. All right, so here's our center support. Let's go ahead and uh, get everything out of this transmission. I used the seal puller, just pull it out. Now here, remember those two bolts I was talking to you about and one bolt is uh, completely supported and you can actually see a line right here uh, where there is, uh, well, this one is partially supported. It seals this uh, circuit here. So you can tighten this bolt up, no problem. But this one here is free floating. If you over tighten that bolt, uh, you're gonna crack the case. You're gonna break the case. Always check your bearing. Your bearing inside your center support. Uh, that's a high failure rate. All right, do that to the side, and let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna grab it by the bushing. Bring everything out. This snap ring right here, it's, uh, it's an update. Let me talk a little bit about it. What happens is that the center support, it would be uh, kind of caulking like this with, with the weight. And what you do, uh, you take it to a machine shop, 
and you buy this snap ring from Sonax and uh, you tell the machine guy to just cut a certain amount all the way around to make this thing flat again and you install the snap ring first you install it first and then your center support now this being flat and this being metal is not going to continue to uh, to wear or dig into the aluminum part of the uh, uh, center support that is a good update but if you torque your bolts you know the way they should uh, you won't have any issues there there's another update that goes in between the washer that goes in between kind of like uh, you know makes it firm this band is not burnt but if you see uh, uh, the condition of it it looks like it's gonna want to start to flake off let me get it closer the friction looks good I know that my camera is focusing back there try to uh, get it to focus on the band we see that we need to replace that band intermediate frictions or second clutch these are high energy they look in good shape being a 2001 it's a Sprague type 2000 models uh, 4R100 came out with the ratchet type that's no longer used and if you have a ratchet type uh, or mechanical diode you have to uh, upgrade to this or downgrade uh, whatever you want to call that but that uh, ratchet style sprag for the 4100s is no longer available it is available for the small units like the 470s and 475s so we get that out of the way and we check uh, where it rides right here the sprag it has to be nice and smooth you can see a little bit shiny there where it rides but it's good okay take our snap ring off take our direct frictions remove them and lo and behold they look they look okay this look good they look in good condition the teeth actually look good as well sometimes you will see the teeth halfway uh, uh, worn out you know eaten uh, they look good in good shape there's nothing wrong with these frictions this is our direct drum our intermediate band right, uh, right here on the outside that intermediate band looks old we need to replace it with a new one being a big truck like this you want to make sure that everything's centered and true go ahead and take this uh, bearings out this is our front planetary ring gear 4R100s you see this drum looks like a C6 drum 4R100s you can see the splines that look good on the other side the splines don't go through all the way this is considered normal on the 4R100s you can actually use this drum on a C6 and it will work but you have to be careful using a C6 drum on a 4R100 because of the splines on the uh, on these piece here it will change so got to be careful with that you can go one way but not the other all right forward frictions let's take this disassemble this clutch pack and here we see that it was slipping you can see some heat marks on the steel plates you can see a line on it get this thing out of the way forward planetary gear assembly it is very critical that check ball it would restrict cooler flow and it would wear from here amazingly nothing happened to this uh, to this uh, planetary gear here you can get your feeler gauges and uh, you know check your clearance it, it will be somewhere about nine thousandths to thirty thousandths of an inch uh, that's acceptable on the pinions I always check it for side movement you know wiggle them side to side and that will check your pinion your feeler gauge will check your clearance on your little washers 
Looks like sunshell bushings were installed. At least those. The other ones look like the factory ones. Let's go ahead and take this off. The rear planetary gear assembly. Same rule applies here. Wiggle them side by side. Looks good. Get your feeler gauge, nine thousands to thirty thousands. Anything over thirty thousands, either you replace the planet or you replace the shims. Sometimes replacing the planet is more affordable. Just depends on where you're buying your parts from. You can get a good use planet or you can get an aftermarket new planet or you can get an OEM which you're going to pay a lot of money for an OEM. They work the same not because they're aftermarket doesn't mean that they are lower quality. This is our rear planet uh, ring gear. Okay let's get our little bearing out of it. You have another bearing that looks just like the one on the piece that I just showed you on the overdrive planet. Now here on this one, being a 4R100, the clutches are different than the E4ODs. I don't know if that's uh, shiny, the light is shining in there or not. I have my screwdriver here with that little cutout. I'm going to grab that snap ring and I'm going to get my L pick and bring my snap ring towards me. I'm going to grab it with my hand, take it off, and actually I'm going to grab the reverse drum and it's going to bring all the clutches with it. There's still one more clutch and one wavy plate. This is a cushion plate. It's a cushion steel. You can see it's warped. And what that does, it acts as a cushion or as a uh, pillow, if you want to call it that. Now there is a problem on some of these units that this drum, you see the clutches came out all right. But sometimes the clutches will get stuck because this blossoms a little bit. It'll get warped like that outwards. And that because, I mean, it could be considered with hot rotting, you know, if you have a, a lightning or a sports truck like that. High RPMs, you know, it'll cause it to blossom. This is an F550 with a lot of weight in the back. And you can see that the clutches, they came out fairly easily. We remove our output shaft. You have to be careful. If something happens here, uh, if this bearing gets destroyed and you're going to replace the whole thing, and if it's an F550, just make sure that you match your reluctor for the output speed sensor. All right. I think we're done here. We go ahead and uh, flip it a little bit to get most of it drained out. I'm going to get a 716 uh, socket or 11 millimeter. We're going to remove these five bolts. These five bolts here, uh, they retain the low reverse uh, race, low reverse uh, one-way clutch. That's, this is our one-way clutch. It turns one way and it locks the other way. That's why it's called a one-way clutch or, or a sprag. All right. This is our return spring for our low reverse uh, piston. We can see some metal. We can see some metal here. And we have the cooler line going into the case. And it goes into here and it lubricates our uh, sprag here. Also, uh, it goes into the output shaft when it comes back from the torque converter. And uh, it, go it comes into here and uh, it actually lubricates our rear section and from the center support forward uh, the front lubrication comes from the stator support. So if your rear section everything got wiped out uh, and it's all black and burn up uh, 
you probably have a problem with your cooler. If your overdrive section got melted black, uh, I mean, I'm talking about the metal pieces, if, if that is damaged, then you have a problem, a restriction in your stator support. All right, let's go ahead and uh, remove our low reverse piston. Go this way. And, uh, well, the camera is too, it's too low. There we go. I applied some uh, compressed air on the apply circuit for the low reverse. And here's our low reverse piston. All right, basic teardown of this uh, 40100 on a uh, 2002, I believe it is, or 2001 F550. Uh, big heavy truck, it's a dually with a bucket in the rear with a crane in the bucket. Uh, basic teardown, and I mean, we're gonna do a full rebuild on this thing and get a, uh, all the upgrades for the torque converter so, so it won't happen again. Uh, it's a pulse width modulated system and what we want to do here on this situation let's check and see what valve does he have in here and being the pull switch modulated it has the factory if you see that nipple coming out of that uh, uh, plug right there you have a uh, pull switch modulated setup in there which is the factory setup and what we want to do we want to upgrade it to an on off and my plug here is kind of stuck. Uh, the valve, lockup valve as well, it's a little stuck. Let me see if I can get some pliers and just grab it from the rear. All right, just bear with me for a little bit. I have these little, little beady, beady pliers that they have real good grip. I can't see them anywhere. All right, I'm gonna use some needle nose. came out just a little bit and got stuck. All right, let's see. There we go. This is our valve, full switch modulated. You get our, our, the valve stroke from the front and then you get your modulation uh, through the rear. Uh, this would be called, works sort of like a bypass clutch control valve or uh, I got the name on the tip of my tongue, but I mean, I, uh, bypass clutch control valve. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was looking for. All right, so here is the valve train setup, and you want, you want to get an aftermarket transgo valve, and what that does is gonna convert it into an on-off. Uh, apply on your uh, torque converter, which will make it last longer, and if you're loaded like this truck is, I mean, you don't want that kind of slip gradually going on, especially if you're going uphill and with a lot of load, you want the clutch to come on and stay on and doesn't slip. All right, well, we'll you know the drill. Basic teardown on this unit. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.